We consider the specific heat of solids and then in particular the contributions due to the phonons. Phonons are the vibrations that take place in a solid and if we analyze the solid close to its equilibrium you find a series of normal modes and for each mode we have an harmonic oscillator and in a previous movie we have already analyzed harmonic oscillators in uh, statistical mechanics and what we found for the energy of uh, harmonic oscillators so now for each mode we have such a harmonic oscillator uh, we have seen that it consists of two parts. The first one is the ground state of the harmonic oscillator and the second one is this term which involves the occupation of the energies and the occupation is given by this uh, denominator which is in fact the uh, Bose-Einstein distribution function with chemical potential zero. The different modes have different frequencies and we have to take into account the details of that uh, spectrum. But uh, Albert Einstein was the first one to make an approximation where that is not necessary. In fact, Einstein made the simple approximation to replace the mode frequency by a single mode frequency, so that's omega e, which means that every atom in the solid is vibrating at the same frequency. And then we can calculate the specific heat, which is the temperature, the, the derivative of the phonon energy, and the only place where the temperature enters into the, ex approximate, into the expression for the energy is this beta here. And if we take the derivative with respect to the T dependence in the beta, we get the following expression. It's uh, h bar omega e over kb t squared. And then we sum over all the modes. But we have each time we have the same contribution, which is h, omega, h bar omega e, e to the power uh, beta h bar omega e and then we have this term here in the denominator. Now we introduce a variable xe which uh, is in fact the term that we see here in the exponent. It's beta which is 1 over kbt times h bar omega e and we can also write that in the form te over t where te is the Einstein energy. And then we can rewrite this in the following simple form. Kb times xe squared e to the power xe divided by e to the power xe minus 1 squared. And then there is a sum over the modes. Uh, obviously we could extract this factor from the sum because it has the same value for each mode. And that is because we have replaced the actual frequency per mode by the sing single number, the, the Einstein frequency. So the question is now, how many modes are there in the solid? We focus on the acoustical modes. We have a simple model and um, the number of modes is then the number of atoms and they can each move in three independent dimensions. So we end up with three N. And if we put that in, we find the result. Three N KB times K, which is a function of TE over T and um, in fact, at high temperatures, we should recover the Dulon Petit result, which is 3n times kb. What is k? k is precisely the function involving the x, so without the kb in front. And uh, it's easy to verify that for small xe, so let's take xe a lot smaller than 1, then we find that k xe equals 1. Uh, that is because the exponent goes to 1. We have an xe squared in the numerator and if we do a uh, Taylor expansion of the denominator we also have an xe raised to the power 2 so that cancels against the numerator. So we find that, x, uh, that k of xe for small xe is equal to 1 and that means that we have the Dulon Petit result which we would expect for high temperatures because high temperatures means that we uh, do not see the quantum effects anymore and we should find the classical result. Then we obtain this particular form which turns out to be not really in agreement with experiments. So let's make a step and include the uh, phonon spectrum and this is precisely what Dubai has done. And uh, to give you an impression of a phonon spectrum, this is the spectrum of a monatomic linear chain. So we have the omega k 
it's mentioned here as ek along the vertical axis and the k vector is along the horizontal axis and so the next step is to include that uh, dispersion relation into this um, expression here so we are not no longer replacing it by a single number now to include that form in all its detail is uh, is usually difficult but uh, as we are looking at the acoustic part of the spectrum we know for a fact that the omega k can always be written as a speed velocity times the length of the k vector so this is in the isotropic limit so long waves so that we don't see the anisotropy of the solid and for k small uh, or omega small this is a good approximation so it's this approximation omega k is csk which we will use in order to make progress in analyzing the specific heat of solids due to the phonons so let us first consider the energy the energy is given as a sum over all the modes and then we have the energy in a mode and then e to the power of beta of the times the energy in the mode minus one well how many modes are there we have to sum over all the k's and then we have to multiply by three because the atoms can vibrate and or all the the waves say the elastic waves in a solid can have three different polarizations and then uh, we multiply that by the uh, Bose-Einstein factor and the h omega k. If we want to have the specific heat, we take the temperature derivative of the result. Now, in order to see <coughs> over which modes we have to uh, sum, we do the following. We know how many modes we have in total. That's 3n. And that can also be written as 3 times the sum over all the k's and uh, the sum of a case can be re replaced by a uh, v factor of v over 2 pi to the third times an integral over the case and that integral runs up to a maximum wave vector and that wave vector is the the, the bio wave vector and it's designed such as to give us the appropriate number of modes the correct number of modes and so if we calculate this integral it's the integral over sphere with radius kd we find uh, 3 V over pi, uh, 2 pi third, that's the prefactor, times the volume of that sphere, which is 4 pi over 3 KD to the third. And we can also uh, formulate this in terms of a Debye frequency, which is the speed of sound times the Debye wave vector. And then we obtain this result in which we have combined these these two factors here uh, and we have replaced the uh, kd to the third by omega d over cs to the third and uh, from that we can immediately conclude that v over 2 pi cs squared is equal to 3n over omega d to the power 3 and from this we find that omega d to the power 3 can be expressed in this way so the important result note that the little n is uh, capital n divided by v it's the density and so we find the omega d by to the third in terms of the density number of atoms per volume times the uh, velocity squared sound velocity squared and we use the final result in order to re rewrite any sum over boats over something by these integrals that this is just a streamlined uh, version of this one uh, of omega squared d omega and something and so we are going to apply this now to the energy expression the energy is given as, as this sum uh, times this important factor which is h omega and then there is this additional omega squared which makes it into an omega to the third and then here we have the Bose-Einstein factor in the denominator and calculating the uh, cap heat capacity as dE dt at constant n and, v, n and v we find this result which looks quite complicated but we can streamline it a little bit 
by replacing the exponent beta h bar omega by a simple new variable x. So these are two new definitions that we are going to use in order to streamline this expression. And then we obtain the following. We have an integral now over dx, which uh, everywhere has an x instead of an omega. And we have got rid of these factors beta h. They now occur in the prefactors to, the, to this integral. And uh, if we wipe everything together, we get this expression. And then we see that here in the denominator, we have exactly an xd to the power 3. xd is defined over here. And so we have an integral which now only involves the upper boundary xd as a variable. And we have this prefactor. So now we define a new function, which is precisely this uh, integral here, including the uh, xd to the power 3 and a factor of 3 in the numerator. Now this function, it's not the Bayer function, although I've given it a letter d here, but it's closely related to another function, which is called the de Bayer function. Anyhow, this function d has been used here in order to write the specific heat in a, in a streamlined form, where we have the Dulant Petit result and then multiplied by d as a function of xd. xd is the only variable uh, that uh, is remaining in the function capital D. So let us do the same analysis as in the Einstein solid. T, when t is high, which means that kt is a lot larger than h bar omega, then the xd occurring here is a small number. So what happens then to this integral? We can then work out the integral by just taking x to be small in the integrand. And that means that, the denominator, that this uh, exponent, exponent here disappears. And in the denominator, we just have an x squared, which cancels two of the x's here in the numerator. So there is an integral over x squared, which gives us one third x to the power three. We fill in the boundaries and we see that this exactly compensates this factor in order to give a final result of one, which is to be expected because at high temperatures, we would expect the Dulon Petit result, which is precisely the prefactor here. So this is the Dulon Petit. So then obviously we look at low temperatures for which the de Bayer x is, uh, has a large value. So we, we replace the upper bound in the integral by plus infinity. And then this integral uh, in fact can be done. It's somewhat complicated and I will not go into details here, but the result for this integral is that it's equal to four pi to the fourth over 15. And if we put that value in, we get the uh, CV actually. But what is important is that the CV uh, goes like one over XD to the power three and XD uh, can be written. I will repeat that here as T over TD over D T. And that means, and that is the most important conclusion here that the CVT scales as t to the power 3 for small values of the temperature, for low temperatures. So do these results make sense when we look at the experiments? Well, we have two models. We have the Einstein model and we have the Bayer model. You see that at high temperatures, they both give uh, more or less similar results. At low temperatures, it's not so clear from this picture, but then there is a clear deviation between the Einstein and the Bayer result. In particular, this drawn line, which is the Bayer line, um, it goes like uh, t to the power three, as we have just seen. And if we uh, look into this picture where I have CV versus T to the power three, this should be a straight line. And indeed for silicon that is observed. And now for copper, you also see a straight line, but then you see deviations here. And these deviations are due to the electron specific heat. And that will be considered in a subsequent movie. And that concludes this discussion about the specific heat contribution due to the phonons in solids.